أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Peace and blessings be upon all of our respective viewers from wherever you may be watching around the world Welcome once again to Ahlul Bayt TV and this program is called The Ark of Salvation a Muharram series of programs giving us some practical advice that we can uh, hopefully implement in our lives and our guest for these uh, series of programs is uh, none other than uh, the honoured guest, Sayyid um, Mustafa Qazwini, uh, who has kindly spent some time to give us some practical advice. Today's session is on how we can, inshallah, make our marriages more stable. So this is the topic of our discussion. And let's start, as always, by welcoming our esteemed guest to the studio, uh, Sayyid Qazwini. Nice to have you with us. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Can I start by asking you um, why in Islam, supposedly, arguably more than any other religion, one may argue, is marriage given so much importance? بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين. We have a mission on this earth <coughs> and in this life. <coughs> excuse me. We have a mission here and uh, therefore, in order for us to fulfill this mission, we need to work together with the opposite gender. God created men and women to complement each other, to integrate each other. So a man by himself in this life cannot fulfill his mission, cannot continue his journey, cannot keep up with his responsibilities. Neither a female without a male or a man can continue her journey. So they integrate each other. Uh, and this is exactly what Allah says in the Holy Quran. You are garments for them, for protection, for help, for integration, and they are also garments for you. Not only human beings. In Surah Al Dhariyat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمِن كُلِّ شَيْءٍ خَلَقْنَا زَوْجَيْنِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَذَكَّرُونَ And of everything, in this universe, we created pearls. So you may reflect on that. So this is the sunnah, the tradition, the system of this life that we need male and female because one gender cannot do the job by, by itself. It needs next to it the other gender because uh, men, they have things that women don't have and women, they have other elements that men lack and they need each other to continue this journey. So this is why there is so much emphasis uh, in the Holy Quran, in the tradition of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that uh, you need to get married to complete your other side, to complete not only your faith, but your life. Because by yourself, you cannot be lonely in this journey. You need a partner. You need a soulmate to help you out in your responsibilities. And, uh, and of course, the moral side of it is the most important. The ethical and the moral side of it is very important. And this is uh, a clear reference to this is in the tradition of the Prophet. Man tazawwaja faqad ahraza nisfa deen. Your, your faith, your deen, uh, your integrity, uh, your chastity would be complemented and integrated and secured when you as a male or as a female you get married. And of course without marriage we cannot get children. I just read a story last night on CNN that uh, a couple who, who are gays you know in America and I think they work in the movie industry they, they got married two men and then they had kids uh, from, uh, you know, uh, another lady. And then after a short period of time, they had to split. And each one said, I will take my, my kid. They had to split because, because there is no female in their marriage. 
and when, when there is no female, it means the element of affection, compassion, mercy is missing, is missing. So, so this journey cannot be completed. And therefore, uh, the hadith says, whoever wants to stand before God on the, on the day of judgment, tahiran mutahharan, purified and refined, falyalqahu bizawja. Let him stand before God with a partner. This partner, if he's male, then his partner is female. If, if she's female, then the partner is going to be male. Okay. Um, tell me, how do, how do we emphasize the importance of marriage, yet at the same time not stigmatize, for example, uh, single parent families because of maybe divorce or maybe a wife has been widowed <coughs> or has become a widow because her husband has passed away or the marriage just didn't work out and they split up and is having to bring up the children on her own or on his own. While Islam emphasizes the importance of marriage, if they're finding it difficult to find a partner, does that mean they're excluded from all of these blessings that you, you're talking about maybe in the hereafter or does that mean that their children may turn out to be bad? I mean, how are we supposed to deal with people in our community? Who Single parent family is an exception, not the norm. We are speaking about the norm. And for every norm, there are some exceptions. Even when you come to the acts of worshipping in Islam, let's say the Hajj, for instance. وَلِلَّهِ عَلَى النَّاسِ حِجُّ الْبَيْتِ مَنْ اسْتَطَاعَ إِلَيْهِ السَّبِيلَ If you can afford it. So if you can't afford it, it doesn't mean you are a bad person or you are not going to make it to paradise. You're still going to make it to paradise maybe faster, maybe in certain cases with uh, certain people, faster than those who have been to Hajj. So this is an exception. You know, sometimes, uh, as you mentioned, divorce, you know, sometimes death. Sometimes they uh, could not find, you know, the right opportunity because marriage is an opportunity, especially nowadays. And nowadays, marriage is not very easy, neither very difficult. Some people, they put some obstacles, they create their own obstacles, you know, some of them are psychological, social, financial, whatever. But God made it easy. And he, God says, I want you to take this, uh, you know, this, this uh, matter very easy. And it is governed, marriage is governed by this uh, basic, you know, premise that uh, if you take it easy, if you don't raise the bar and take it easy, God will going to make it easy for you. Is going to expedite this process for you. But if someone takes it very difficult and he creates the obstacles, it will be up, uh, difficult for him or her. So there are some parents who did not, they were not fortunate enough to continue this journey with their partners or from the beginning they were not able to get married because, because of certain, you know, uh, exceptions, social reasons, health reasons, you know. Uh, but that does not mean they are bad people. We are talking about the norm, if you can afford, sure. if you are in a, in, in a position that you can afford to get married and have children and raise children, then you must do that. If not, because of certain reasons, then God, of course, knows everything and knows about our intentions. And it does not mean that you stand before him. He's going to say, I'm not happy with you because you, God knows that was, uh, there was no opportunity for that. But uh, still they can help in the society. They can substitute. I know some, some uh, ladies who got married and they didn't have kids or they didn't have a chance to, to, to marry. But they were good sisters in, the, in, in their families and their community. They were good mothers to others. They were helping out others who had children to raise their kids. So you can always find a substitute for that. Okay. Brilliant. Um, of course, it varies depending on the communities that we are referring to. But there are certain, if you like, traditional methods that have been employed by many communities in terms of finding a spouse. Maybe the mother would do some networking in the community 
what sometimes the West calls an arranged marriage to an extent. Um, and, but nowadays I'm hearing that even apparently some parents are now going to Facebook and networking with other families via Facebook and then finding a prospective child for their son, let's say, uh, a, a prospective uh, daughter or daughter-in-law for their, their son to get married. Are the traditional ways okay? Are the more modern ways, sometimes people meet at university or at college and decide they want to get married and take them home? Are all of these acceptable Islamically or do we need to be careful about the, the modes and methods we choose? In Islam there is no particular form of approaching the other side or proposing to the other side. Uh, it is according to your own tradition. Wherever you live, the country you live in, the culture you live in, you have your own tradition and you, you better follow the tradition of that land, of that society. Uh, however, for communities who live in the West, in Europe, in North America, I believe a combination of both methods is really necessary. Neither one can approach the family of the, the girl or the boy through pure classical and traditional methods like what you mentioned, the uh, arranged marriage, nor a person can marry without the consent or the knowledge or the blessing of his parents and his family. I don't think both would work in the West. We need a combination of both of them to incorporate, incorporate both methods here. So a person here, he goes to school to, to work, he can find someone interesting to him and then he can approach his family and consult with his family. Because why do I say this? Because I've seen in many cases that some of the boys or the girls, they act by themselves. They say we are mature enough, you know, I studied here in this college, in this university, I'm a graduate of this and that, you know, I am very knowledgeable, I am very experienced, and I don't need my mother or my father or my siblings or any, any member. This is a matter between two people. But then, after a period of time, when they get married and they are in trouble, they go to their parents. Oh, daddy, please come and help me with this, you know, help me out. Oh, mommy. So, you need your family support. At the end of the day, you need it. You need your family, your family's blessing, especially for the female. A female, when she receives her family's support, blessings, and consent, then she will be more respected and honored by her husband. He knows that she has the backing of her family. She's not alone here. So he will give it, you know, a second thought before he does anything to her or try to, let's say, you know, abuse her or, or mishandle that marriage, he would know that she has a father, she has a mother, her siblings are with her. We need the family support, whether it's for the boy or for the, for the girl. We need the family support because marriage in the Islamic culture is not a union between two individuals. It is, in fact, a union between two families. Two families, they get together to get to know each other and cooperate and work together and help each other. So I think here the, the ideal uh, you know, solution to this is that uh, the boys, the girls, they need to consult with their parents. Sometimes they are, you know, uh, they really don't, uh, you know, don't get the chance to get to know the other gender, the opposite gender. So they might ask their family members or sometimes friends. I've seen it nowadays. They come to the mosque, to the Islamic center. Oh, please, Sayyid or Sheikh, help me. I, I want to get married. So this is also considered arranged marriage, but not imposed on them. Sure. We are against the uh, arranged marriage that a father finds someone for his son or his daughter and then those guys will be the last people to know about their marriage. It is imposed on them. This is unacceptable in Islam, definitely unacceptable in Islam. And actually, the, these types of marriages 
according to the school of Ahlul Bayt, to the jurists and the fuqaha, uh, the, the, the forced marriage is invalid marriage, is, is not accepted. The marriage has to be a combination of, of, of uh, a family affair, where the f all family members, they bless it, they support it, and they, they celebrate this marriage. Inshallah. Tell me, I'm going to put forward a, a theory here, and that is maybe to help, at least yeah, give us a chance of having stability in our marriages, maybe we should, both parties should lower their expectations, that which they expect from the other side. If the woman is, uh, or the, the wife is not expecting to find a knight in shining armour, and if the man is not looking for some film actress that wears hijab, for example, and is a perfect housewife in the house, and maybe has a full-time job, if, we, if both parties lower their expectations, would this be the right way, to, or would help in securing that marriage, or not? Raising the bar for the marriage and establishing a family is very dangerous and it would make the marriage very difficult and then when people get married and they don't find these expectations they're going to be disappointed and frustrated. Marriage is an institution of learning and education. We are not perfect from the first day, neither the husband nor the wife. They are people who have no experience, young, but they want to live a better life, they want to be true servants to God through their family. So when they get married, they learn from each other and they start this journey of perfection step by step, step by step. And this journey takes a long period of time, several, I would not say several years, but several decades rather. So they should not have high expectations that I want her to be the most beautiful, the most educated, at the same time from a very famous family and very rich and very... And then when it comes to kids, she's a housewife, she cooks good, she cleans good. That does not happen. If one has these expectations in his mind, I'm going to tell you, he's not going to get married. He's not going to find such a wife, you know. So, and the same thing for the female. If she wants him to be the most handsome, the most intelligent, the most famous, a celebrity here and there, and at the same time he's very rich, and she lives in this mansion, and this, this is a fairy tale. You see this only in the movie. And even the movies nowadays, they are not doing these types of you know, <laughs> movies anymore. These are outdated. So, we have to be realistic in, in the marriage, we have to be realistic. There are certain elements that you should not forego them. You should insist on them. مَنْ جَاءَكُمْ مَنْ تَرْضَوْنَ دِينَهُ وَخُلُقَهُ These two foundations and pillars of an ethical marriage, according to the Prophet ﷺ. Deen, referring to the doctrines, his aqeedah, the doctrinal side. His aqeedah, his belief in God, the Prophet, the Quran, uh, the Imams, Ahlul Bayt, the, the, the right path is, is good. Because sometimes a person can be a, a Muslim, but not a mu'min. And sometimes he is mu'min, he is mu'min, but with, within his iman, there are misunderstandings. Few, yeah, few misunderstandings here and there. So his aqidah has to be safe. Sometimes he's a mu'min, but he's very zealous. He's very radical. This is also unacceptable. He has to be moderate. So this is one side. The second uh, element is khuluqahu, his character, his behavior, his personality. Is he generous or he's mean, stingy? This is very important. Is he very angry person or he's tolerant and forbearant? Again, very important. You don't want to give your daughter to a person who's angry. He does his prayers on time. He goes to Hajj every year. He fasts Ramadan. He pays charity. He does this. But when it comes to family affairs, he, he doesn't have any patience. Mm. He uses 
violence at home or, or, or you know, he, he, he mistreats his family, his wife, his children. You don't want to live with that person. So akhlaq is also very important. Akhlaq, these two elements, if they are found, then you should not worry a lot about other elements. Whether he has a college degree from this school or that school, whether how much saving he made, God says about money, in yakunu fuqara yughnihum Allahu min fadlah. Don't worry about that. We're going to give them. We're not, now maybe he doesn't have anything. But in the future, I know millions of people. When they got married, their parents helped them. They didn't have a place to, to live. They lived with their parents in the same house. After two years, they picked up and they started, you know, working. And God gave them so much that they are helping others too. So these two elements are very vital, important. Others are complementaries. If they are found, it's good. Someone was telling me, I need to marry Sayyidah, the descendants of the Prophet. If I don't marry her, my marriage would not be successful. I would tell, her, tell him, what, well, it's good. I agree with you. I, I know because you are doing this because you love the Prophet. You love his family. But that does not mean every Sayyidah is better than every non Sayyidah. It doesn't mean. You have to look at the character first. Before you look at the title, whether she's Sayyidah, descendant of the Prophet, or descendant of whatever, you have to look at the character. Sure. The character is important. Then comes the title. If the title is found, is good. If it is not found, forget about it. So, yes, I agree that uh, expectation, high expectations, are really dangerous. And I have seen some people, they reach their 40s now, mid-40s, late 40s, still looking for the perfect spouse. Sp still, and I told them, listen, you would reach your 80s and you would still look for the perfect spouse and you cannot find it. Perfect one in paradise, inshallah. This life is the life of struggle and work and we build ourselves. We, we, we try to perfect ourselves okay we aspire of course but nobody is perfect we learn from each other we learn in the inst within the institution of marriage we build each other and we learn from each other okay just in the, in the couple of minutes we have left can we ask you for uh, alhamdulillah you've already given us many steps or practical steps that we can uh, employ if we're looking for a wife or even those of us who are married but are there any other snippets of advice you can give us Marriage is about partnership, and it's a lifelong commitment. Some people nowadays, they think, well, I will marry if it didn't work after six months, one year, two years. It's not like that. It has to be full commitment and seriousness, and you have to sacrifice your life, not just your money, your time, you have to give your life to your marriage, to your partner, to your children. Nowadays, uh, a, a, a part-time husband, a part-time wife would not work. Full-time, with full intention, sincere intention. And you have to build this uh, trust in the marriage, this uh, which is based on honesty, integrity. Uh, you have to build this friendship, because marriage it's not just marriage, it is real friendship. The closest person to you should be your spouse, the closest person to you, even closer than your parents, although you have to respect your parents, be dutiful to them, but they don't live with you. They live in another country, another house, another city. The one who's living with you is your spouse and your children. You have to be the closest one to them. And this comes only through true and genuine friendship. And also, we have to be patient and forgiving. In the marriage, if we quarrel and then we want to go to the court, to the judge to file for divorce, this is not a marriage. In the marriage, we have to be very forgiving and we have to teach the other side through our forgiveness, through our patience and tolerance. It is not an arena for retaliation, tit for tat. It's not within the... The institution of marriage is very sacred. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is witnessing what we are doing and it's a big responsibility and we have to deliver this responsibility before God on the day of judgment because he's going to ask us about everything we did, everything we said within the institution of marriage. Okay, brilliant. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, we've had there some uh, very valid and important practical uh, steps and uh, bits of advice that can help us inshallah secure and make our marriages a lot more stable make sure you join us next time when we'll be talking about uh, domestic violence in marriages inshallah this has been the arc of salvation with our guest Sayyid Mustafa Qazwini thank you very much for watching assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh